Welcome everybody to the 12 o'clock show with Mayor Joe and really good thing is you mentioned the music just now. The reason why is a number of years ago we actually did a theme show. It was usually I would try and get music for all of the different guests that would come on and that theme show that time was for Halloween. So we had Michael Jackson Thriller playing and Facebook shut us down in like half a second. Oh, wow. uh, and so since then we've never been able to play any other music on or like, you know, bringing the chief of police, we got bad boys coming on, things like that. Um, but this one is actually a personal piece of friend of ours uh, that's actually a community member actually put together. So that way when people are logging on, that's kind of the way that goes. Even so, better, even yeah. better. Well, first of all, I have half the Reynoldsburg football team administrative <laughs> coaching staff here today. Um, so I'm going to just let you guys kind of introduce yourselves and let's get right into it because we got a lot of things to talk about. Yep, I'm Juwan Armahan, football coach, Reynoldsburg High School. Uh, I'm Scott Sugar, Reynoldsburg's uh, defense coordinator this year and the guy that helps keep Coach Armour organized. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I am MB Miller. I am the coach for health and wellness and behavior. I am CC Beck. I'm the Reynoldsburg Football Parent Association president. I am Tiffany Mitchell. I am the Reynoldsburg Football Parent Association secretary. So obviously it's more than just one or two people running a football team and getting all this set together. So I really appreciate you coming in. Um, I know I'm excited football. You know, I don't want to say anything about the school starting because we know that's a bad topic for people. But, you know, eventually the nice thing about school starting is football season's right there. Um, your guys are getting ready to, I assume, to go into that, you know, joking, that mandatory session. Everybody's kind of all on uh, getting into August. So what, what should we expect to see when we come to the games uh, this, this fall? I think the biggest thing that, and we, you know, we're starting to see it, and I know it's something that we'll continue to build on, is just the change of culture, mm -hmm. right, the change in attitude. Um, I know we talked about the expected success that we're expecting, but I think it's more important to address um, the mindset of the kids, right? Um, Reynoldsburg, we, we're, we're not short on athletes. We have athletes. And I think if we manage those other things, the discipline, the culture, the effort, um, we have better results. And so that's what we're seeing from our kids. And honestly, it's been um, a pleasure seeing it in them, seeing that they're enjoying it. Um, I know you noticed we have a lot of a lot of team members, um, one of them, Dr. Miller, uh, and I think it's important, Dr. Miller is also the high school social worker. And so having him on board, we want to make sure we're addressing every aspect of our athletes' um, life and their experience. So if they're having trouble at home, having trouble at school, having trouble with their peer groups, we want to make sure we're addressing those issues so that they not only can be effective on the field, but they can be effective in the classroom. Absolutely. So i got to ask you, the defensive coordinator, um, any new plans schematically, you know, press coverage, <laughs> safety blitzes every play, things like that? All of that. <laughs> so, I don't want to give too many secrets. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the new college football game came up. Yeah. So Jarmer and I have been going through all the plays <laughs> to find what defensive schemes work best for us, so and those go. are the ones we're going to be implementing. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we have three principles for our defense, right? Mm -hmm. The first one is effort, aggression, angle, tackle. That's the very first principle. The kids provide the effort and aggression. The coaches teach you how to take the proper angle and tackle. If we can do that, then we can move on to our next principles where we're really making plays. Well, I appreciate it. I just, I know we always talk about it because uh, I didn't know if you know this because you guys are busy coaching, but there's a lot of coaches in the stands too. Um, they obviously know how to do everything at a, at a much higher level, uh, but that's one of the conversation pieces always there. You know, I've been going to games for, you know, the past 10 years and I've seen a lot of good and a lot of rough times. Uh, but we all, everybody always thinks that they're doing something, you know, oh, well, why didn't we do this? You know, the, the armchair quarterback. So I appreciate it. Um, and I got to say, have you played, have you played the game, the new college game? Yeah. All right. I'm not, I'm not doing well. Though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it has been a long time. It was nice to see that. Um, but I remember when they were coming out the last time. So, um, but we'll, we could talk video games at, at another point. Um, so you, you're doing a lot of things. So it's not just stuff on the field, like you mentioned, but you've got some other things coming up. Uh, the big one that I'm looking forward to hearing about is this Radar Football Showcase. So yeah. I know that's coming up in a couple weeks. Tell me about what's that out in. Is the community allowed to come there? How are we doing all this? The community is definitely allowed to come. I know Cece's going to speak a little bit more about it, but um, I'm very big on community engagement. I'm very big on transparency, volunteerism. And I think in order to have people commit to a process, they have to know what's going on with that process. Yeah. And so transparency is a part of that. Our doors, we have an open door policy. We meet with our parents because just like they have an expectation for us, we have an expectation for them when you talk about those, those, those coaches in the stands. Yeah. Parents' behavior matters too because that behavior impacts the behavior of our kids. And so, you know, it's a completely um, team dynamic. Um, I, I learned this a long time ago. Most effectively as a commissioner of gun violence, 
Uh, we had an outstanding results in the city of Toledo, 66% reduction of homicides in our first target area, which led to um, three years later having the low numbers that they have now, I think around 42 or 43 when we started with 71. But that wasn't a one-person initiative. Having success in football is not a one-person initiative, right? And so it takes a family. It takes a group of individuals that, um, that are going to put our children first to make sure that they have what they need to be successful. And I think that's the environment that we're creating. I think the kids and parents appreciate it. And we're going to see it translate to success on the field. As um, far as the community members for the um, event. So in regards to our community showcase, what we're asking the community to do is just come out and support the boys. Um, we're inviting our other uh, team affiliates within Reynoldsburg High School. So our cheerleaders, our band, our volleyball team, all those sports activities. We want everyone to be able to just come out and get to know the community because we, we know the importance of the community backing our team. And we've seen the decrease over years. And we want to make sure that they understand that we understand that there's a part we have to do as those who facilitate these teams. And we're going to do our part. And we're just asking the community to come and support those players because they are doing their best and they're working very hard to gain those kind of recognitions and that fan base back. Well, I can tell you that everyone, if they really have been, ever been around the football program, they realize that a lot of the power is between the moms and the booster organizations, getting things done. Um, ten, a tenacious would be a good way to do it. Because you, you do a lot. It's not just, you know, this thing. It's team meals it's get all of the all everything that goes along with it that nobody sees because usually when people are there they're just watching the team on the field so thank you um <laughs> you're not going to get a lot of those things all the way through this season, but i know what it takes so i do appreciate that um so other than showing up what else can the community do what kind of do we have fundraisers going on do we have other things that we can do anything that we can contribute let us know so we can get that out there because we all know the community wants the team to be successful and there are things that we can't help you as much as we can help you with coaching. We can't help you with coaching, but what we can do is some of the other stuff. Um, absolutely. So um, some of the great things that we do have coming up is we do have our bucket drop this week uh, on Sunday, August 28th. July. We, I'm sorry, July, July. July 28th. Um, we will be at the corners of Bryson, Bryson Rose Livingston, yeah. Bryson Rose Hill, um, Livingston and Rose Hill, and we will be at the 256 uh, junction between uh, Walmart and Target on both sides. And Main Street and Rose Hill. Yes. Yep. Um, Always the popular location. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will also, again, be having on August 3rd at 7 p.m. our community showcase. Um, and one of the great other things that we have is um, you see us kind of wearing these matching shirts. Um, we have a great staff at RFPA who came up with the idea of, of using our themes that we have for our home games, and we have four home games this year. So this is one of our things for our first home game, which is the Blackout Gang Little Junior Raiders uh, game. So we have these shirts um, that will be dropping today, I believe, on, the website. on our website, ReynoldsburgFootball.com, where you can purchase these shirts and or purchase, purchase the package of the full shirts for all four games. And those proceeds actually go towards the football team's needs. For That's the actually pretty ingenious, because, I, I mean, we... If you don't, because my kid graduated last year, so I'm not going to get the updated version of what the themes are, but <laughs> that actually helps out, so I have something. That's good. That's a really good idea. And we still promote that you bring your old Raiders gear still, mm -hmm. and we still have a great relationship with Starstruck for our bird gear that's coming out, but we just want to focus on those four games that we yeah. really have those ideas for, for, just to make it fun for the parents. You know, the kids have their little things, so we have ours, too. No, that's a good, that's <laughs> really good. And it's needed, right? We definitely need it. Um, all the proceeds go to our, our kids, our football players players to feed them, dress them, um, and so it's definitely needed. So, and I appreciate what our RFPA does because they work extremely hard. No, they absolutely do. So, I appreciate that. Um, and the link will be available on the website. On the website, too. And yeah. also, there'll be the Booster Barn for sale on each game. Yeah, everybody, we always have to do a couple of visits to the Booster Barn throughout the year just to make sure, so that's always good. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's one of those things. As a former teacher, I'm always, you know, we usually do, like, June is uh, Friday, July is Saturday, it's not August is Saturday, you know, that's a long weekend type right. of thing, so... We're getting to that point where it's almost getting real, so I know there's a lot of work ahead, but we wish you guys nothing but the best. If there's anything that we can do on the show to help promote, obviously, you know, you got the city support. I'll be out there. Um, I promise I will not come down to the field and start coaching. Right <laughs> You're welcome. Um, You're welcome. Um, I do appreciate it. You guys have always been great to us, uh, and, you know, we, we want to be there for you in the, for the rest of the season, too. I always Absolutely. enjoy the pie in the face thing. Oh, yeah. No, that, <laughs> that, that, you know, a lot of people enjoy that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I did get a question. Oh, we got a question. Good. Yeah, it says, um, they're asking, where can families find more information about the program that took students to Florida for a week? Eligibility requirements to participate. 
So I'm so excited for that question. Um, myself and Dr. Miller, we run a program in Reynoldsburg High School. This is our third year. Every year is growing. Every year is expanded. We train high school students to facilitate a curriculum called Seven Mindsets to middle school and elementary and pre-K kids. They do an amazing job. Um, last year, we sent three kids, Aaliyah, um, Wasco, Emmanuel, um, Kendigen, and Alex Crump, who all went last year. Um, Alex and Emmanuel received $3,700 scholarships. This year, we sent 11, eight, eight students and the three, the previous three, um, and um, Mamadou was our $3,700 scholarship winner. Um, so kids just have to participate. We find the money to send them, um, and, but kids have to participate. And so what they have to do is come to chat and chew during lunches. So right, that identifies the kids that are committed to the process. So through the month of August and September, we identify those kids that are the most interested. Then we train those kids the first semester of the school year. They begin going out the second half of the school year to facilitate the curriculum to other schools. And it's been amazing. So um, if that is a student, show up. <laughs> if that is a parent, tell your child to show up. Um, and it's, uh, again, it's an amazing process. It's an evidence-based, re uh, it's e it's evidence research-based curriculum. I contracted that curriculum first as the Dean of Students at Columbus Art and Technology Academy. We reduce every incident, every referable incident in the school we reduce. So it only makes sense to use it to address gun violence when we understand that when I graduated in 95, individuals that were shooting and being shot were 22, 23 and older. And what we see today, individuals being shot and impacted by gun violence, 16 and younger. Yeah. Right. So being able to address their emotional intelligence serves in their decision-making process. And so it's been an amazing process. Um, Dr. Miller is, is one of our strongest advocates. Um, and if they just participate, very simple. And also there will be information coming out in newsletters that we create starting in August. And hopefully be back on the mayor's oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. to share. Well, i got to throw in that. I don't know how much you follow along. So um, city council was kind enough. They actually supported. We are selling the land right next to the Central Ohio Primary Care on East Main Street. And I didn't know if you know what was going in there. So the front's going to be restaurant and retail. So there'll be some good things. But behind it is indoor athletic facilities, mm -hmm. um, which includes a full-size football field as of right now. So end zone to end zone, all indoors. Plus, we'll have another facility right next to it for basketball, volleyball, and other sports all the way across. So the idea would be that they would probably start construction sometime in next year, and then it would be open probably, I would say, the 20, maybe the end of 25, 26 school year, something along those lines. So that would be an opportunity to do certain things. Um, if the temperatures get to that 90 degree, you know, that really <laughs> I can imagine maybe one of those days, maybe there'll be an indoor practice. Yeah, on that yeah. We don't want to spoil them, though. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure that so we continue to do that. I know I've talked to your athletic director about it, so he's aware because there are times that are dedicated for uh, athletic facilities and teams from the school district. So they will have access to those facilities as well as uh, Boys and Girls Club is going to be one of those tenants okay, in there to help nice. in there. So uh, just make sure that I, we'll get that communication out there. I know it just seems like a shameless plug because I was going to talk about it. No, <laughs> it's a huge, but it's a huge thing. It's a big thing. We don't have yeah, anything like huge. that on this side of town. Yeah. Um, and this will be something good for all sports. I'm sure there will be uh, times where they'll be doing other things like agility training, speed training, stuff Absolutely. like that as well. And providing alternatives for kids for their time. Yes. Right now we see in Ohio, especially individuals that are students that are um, – Declining their participation in extracurricular activities, so providing those opportunities only can benefit. It's them. at one p.m. to about six, seven o'clock. Yeah, yeah. one hundred and ten percent. That's the time that we yes, need sir. to find something for everybody to do. Well, I appreciate it. We'll definitely check in with you all the way across, and I'll make sure and keep uh, announce all the themes for the home games. And I'll check out that <laughs> website. I'm not usually a t-shirt guy, given the suit and tie thing, but I, but I think that's what I'll probably have you to. You can wear a tie too. with yeah. a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know. That. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I appreciate it. Anything else? Just please uh, feel free and share it with us. Thank you very much for coming. Thank along. you very Thank much. You for Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody, it's going to be time for football season before you know it. Do you want to hang around for a little bit, or you want to? We got you, work to do. You got to, <laughs> don't be shy. Go ahead and out of here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, and with that, believe it or not, we're going to take it to a completely different level and, uh, with Amanda from our Parks and Recreation Department. As soon as we do the set change, if we were a TV show, this would be our commercial break. <laughs> Don't worry, you, you, I know you're going to get my follow-up no. you know, from that. Um, there's a lot of cool things going on in Parks and Rec. There is. Um, I know you're probably going to mention things. I've got a couple of things. Mm -hmm. um, 
But first of all, let's talk about how long have you been with Parks and Rec? Because it seems like it's maybe not everybody's aware of you. I know there's a couple yeah. of really cool videos out there <laughs> of you, but how long have you been with Parks and Rec? So I've been in the field of Parks and Rec for over 12 years now, which is crazy. Um, but I've been with Reynoldsburg for almost two years, so time is flying. It, um, it is indeed. So what are your favorite Parks and Rec activities? Um, so my, my background before here was actually camps and summer camps and that whole thing. So safety town is a big plus for me. I love being with the little kids and doing all the safety things before they enter kindergarten, first grade. So that was just last week. So we had a lot of fun with that. Um, but I also love the events, just kind of seeing it all come together, seeing the community and just being out there. That's pretty cool. I know there's always something going on with it. Um, so there are a lot of things that Parks and Rec have done that are new this year. Mm -hmm. um, any highlights, any things that you kind of want to share, and then like what do we what do we got coming up for the rest of the year? Yeah, um, so we kicked off summer with a new event, um, our Nature Adventure mm -hmm. uh, program. So we were out at um, the Livingston House, and we did actually offered free tree climbing for the community, which was fun, and brought in vendors that were all kind of nature-based. Um, so that was really fun, and we're definitely going to do that again next summer, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, we also started a First Friday event series um, this summer. So the first Friday in June, July, August, and September, uh, we kind of combined a lot of our past um, traditional events. So um, we have music, food trucks, um, and with a movie in the park. So our next one is August 2nd, so next Friday. Come on out. We, we actually have the Reynoldsburg Community Band providing music. Um, and then we're showing the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. At dusk. So Are you a big fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Have you I, never seen anything? Whatsoever? Oh no, I, the old school stuff. The old school stuff. I haven't seen the new movie, okay. but the, <laughs> the old stuff. Well, it, it's there's just so much that you've got going yeah. on. Um, you know, obviously there's the other part of it, which is where the big things a lot of people come out of, which is in sports. I mm -hmm. know, you know, we've got fall soccer coming up. Um, you know, there's always something going on. What do you think the most popular sport is in Reynoldsburg right now? So right now, I mean, based on the numbers, it's definitely soccer. Um, we've seen a big increase the last even just two years um, mm -hmm. of our soccer program. So in uh, 2024, we will service at the end of the year almost 900 kids in our soccer program. So we had almost 500 in spring and we're just over 400 for this fall so it's awesome to see that <laughs> um, and before somebody asks yes we're going to work on parking at civic park that oh, is yeah, in the plans in, yes, um, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, it, it is up something up there but i yeah. mean there's just a lot of things so uh, mm -hmm. you obviously get to go out and you get to deal with everybody all the time what, but what's your favorite part of being with parks and rec and this is a perfect time to say Donna Bauman, your director. Yeah. Um, the people. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the people are a big one. Um, but I love just kind of seeing it all come together. I mean, after you go through all the details and the planning, just seeing it all come together, whether it's a big event or just a small program, um, just seeing people enjoy what you've actually kind of put the effort into is a big one. Um, and one of those things I actually forgot to mention earlier is a new thing we've been doing this July to celebrate National Parks and Recreation Month is pop-up parks. So we've been popping up once a week kind of in random parks in the city and just kind of enjoying an hour together with the community. Um, and that's been a lot of fun. We've had up to kind of 30 people come to one of the parks and just kind of hang out with us and, and play around. Um, and so again, just having kind of that time with the community. But one special thing we're doing um, this week for our pop-up park is we're actually going to pop up at the farmer's market tomorrow from four to seven um, and we are celebrating so we as a parks and rec department are turning 60 this year and so we are celebrating our birthday <laughs> <laughs> so come visit us at the farmers market tomorrow um, we'll have activities and games and again just an opportunity to connect and have a little celebration well it's always a lot of fun um, I know I know I got a couple of questions for you ahead yeah. of time and I was talking you know not all the time do the guests get questions ahead of time <laughs> uh, so this one is um, about a memorial bench um, at Huber Park um, and it was around where the trail was but the trail was moved uh, the bench has been under a tree. Do we know what's going on with that and things of that nature? Yes. So that was part of, obviously, the contracting work. We had to remove it to do the new path. Um, and that still falls under the contractor scope. So the contractor is the one who actually has to put the bench in. So, yes, we are aware that it has not been put back in, but we cannot physically do it yet. Um, so we did go through and do a final kind of walkthrough of the path in, the, in that part of the park. Um, and so we have a list of things we're buttoning up in the next couple weeks. So it is to come. All right, and then the next question that we have after that, um, 
you know, the, the, there's a new trail, obviously, which is fine, but there are other areas that might have a couple low spots here and there. Do we have any idea? And again, I know we've talked about it a little bit, but are, are there plans to fix that to make sure it's even so there's not as much ponding in the future and things like that? For sure. Um, any future trail work is going to be added to our capital improvement um, project. So it is, again, on the list for yep. future improvements. And I think the second part of the question was actually the other question from somebody else. So apparently a number of people have looked at this bench and have decided yes. <laughs> that's it. So do we have any questions from our guests? No. I know we were expecting a question for uh, from uh, Bonna Dalman at some point in time uh, that might have asked a question. Uh, but you, it's been refreshing to have you here. It's fun um, just because of the different kind of energy that you bring to it. And obviously, there's more to it. Not every kid is an athlete. Yeah. And there has to be things that are there in mm -hmm. addition to it. So I know I'll run through a couple of Parks and Recs events in a little bit. Do you mind hanging out for a little while? Oh, yeah, I'd like okay. to I mean, I know you're boss, so I think you're okay to stay <laughs> yeah, here exactly. for a while. Um, so... Any questions from anybody else out there? No. Nope. All right. So if you have questions, please do it. Um, the one, uh, the one uh, last question that I had for you is actually the best place to get all the information for your Parks and Rec. Where, where, where should you direct them? Um, one, all residents should be getting our brochure of the heirloom in their mailboxes three times a year. Um, so that's going to give you a big picture of what's coming up. But our Facebook page is always being updated um, with additions or changes that might be coming. So just follow us on Facebook. All right. It's always a good thing. Uh, so moving on to Reynoldsburg City Schools, we've got a fun things with there as, we're, as we uh, learned. Uh, the district is going to be moving forward with a levy request. It's a 6.65 mil request, uh, which equates to about $233 a month. Uh, as you learned last week, uh, the Franklin County Auditor site has a web page that uh, once they have it updated, again, paperwork takes a little bit of time. You can find out exactly what the cost is for your home. Uh, if you live in the Licking County or Fairfield County section, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, you just have to call them. I don't think they have anything on there. Um, but if you want more information about it, there are a number of events coming up, and I'm sure the district will promote it. But uh, the first one is actually going to be at the Reynoldsburg Library on August 28th from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, there'll be another event September 23rd. Uh, on October 3rd at the Chamber of Commerce lunch, they'll have a question and answer session there as well. Um, as well as October 17th at the Senior Center. So we're going to make sure that that's kind of brought around so everybody gets the actual information. Um, school funding is complex uh, at its best of times, but over the last couple of years it's even becoming more challenging. Uh, but this is a great opportunity to find out why is it that they need the money, what is it going to be spent for, how is it going to benefit the students in the community of Reynoldsburg. Um, you know, you heard that the uh, football team is doing their event on Saturday night. The, the Raider Marching Pride is going to be out there on Friday, August 2nd at 7.30. So maybe you can kind of sneak away, grab something to eat over at the uh, first Friday, and then come back and watch a little bit of the band preview show, and then head back just in time for when it gets a little darker out for the movie. So you've got some things there. Uh, but that will be at the Livingston campus in the stadium. Uh, if you have questions before then, you can go ahead and reach out to the board office. Uh, Neil Whitman will have board office hours, but that's going to change because he got his teaching schedule and there may be some different uh, things coming up. Uh, other ways to support students out in Reynoldsburg is the Reg Reynoldsburg Education Foundation Gala. It's Thursday, September 19th, and this is exactly what you, you got to get dressed up, Love the that. whole thing. <laughs> Uh, great food, uh, some spiritist beverages, if you like, and it's just an opportunity to kind of gather around. Um, there's auctions for different items. I know they've had Blue Jackets tickets in the past, autographed items. Uh, student art is for sale. So if you're interested, the early bird pricing is $55, uh, $60 the day of, or $75 at the door. Uh, so make sure you take a look at those. Um, this weekend we did uh, the first, this past weekend we did the first walk and talk with the mayor. Um, so we had a couple of residents show up, which was great. Actually had uh, school board member and uh, Neil Whitman and city council member Lou Salvadia also joined us and we talked about a lot of good things. Uh, we picked up about a half a bag of trash uh, on Bartlett and Rose Hill and Retton, so we kind of went in that area. Um, but it was a good conversation. We talked about the PNC site, we talked about water, we talked about flooding, we talked a lot about Ohio State football, more so than we probably imagined. Uh, but it was a good conversation with the community, and it was nice. It was very, uh, it was a pace and, you know, kind of clarified some certain things about what cities can and cannot do. But it was nice because it wasn't like in the city hall. It was just somewhere out, and we were doing a good job picking some things up. So this weekend, uh, I will be out uh, at uh, Birchview and Linbridge Drive. Uh, so I'll be at the corner there at 10.30 a.m. on Saturday. And then I'll take a little walk around from uh, Birchview to, to Linbridge and then to Beltry. So it's just kind of a loop around in there. I'll do the same thing. If you live in the neighborhood and you're watching, I hope you can join me. If you live somewhere else and you just want to join me anyway, come on out. I think the weather is going to be perfect on Saturday, so it's a great opportunity. 
Um, following the next month in August, I have Slate Ridge and First Gate are two other roads. And like I said, I'm going to do two a month or so to see how it gets in there. Um, like I said, if it, nobody shows up, I get to pick up litter. If other people get to show up, I get to pick up litter and answer questions. So I think it's a win-win all the way across. So hopefully you can join us with that. Uh, Ragnar Road update. Uh, the water line is practically done. Uh, so they're going to be shifting over to do storm water, which is not the most exciting thing in the world, but that's the next one. AEP is all over the place. Um, they're everywhere. Uh, so they've been moving poles, taking poles down, things like that. And Columbia Gas is on pace uh, based on their schedule as well, which is good. So we're continuing to move forward on Wagner Road. Knock on wood, there aren't too many issues. Um, you mentioned uh, Coda, or I'm sorry, the Market Off Main. Coda is going to be joining us on August 8th, so in just a couple of weeks, talking about all of that. Um, so that'll be a good thing. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. So we've got the sales tax holiday, or the sales tax holiday is actually coming up as well, so keep an eye on that. Uh, August 6th, because we wanted to cram more events into the Tomato Festival week, we've got the National Night Out, and that's right here at JFK Park, I believe. Yes. So that'll be August 6th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. right here. Uh, there's going to be, a, are you doing the DJ work or are we having a DJ? Uh, it's not me. Not you? <laughs> the look on your face was terrifying about the idea. So DJ, raffle, bounce house. Um, usually they have a dunk tank, but I don't think that's for any of us. I think that's more for some of the officers as well. Um, I know sometimes when it's really hot out, it actually is kind of refreshing. So hopefully you can join for that. Um, we did have our town hall uh, for the flooding grant. That was last week. Unfortunately, between, I think there was a couple of accidents on 70 and traffic was an issue. We didn't want to proceed with it and then other people get caught not being there. So we went ahead and postponed it. So we're going to do it again September 4th um, and that will hopefully gather all of the information. We'll have some solutions and things like that. So if you have not gotten the emails for that, you will in the not too distant future. A um, couple other programs that are coming up through the parks, you know, you talk about doing things that aren't necessarily athletic related. Adult prom is the one that yeah. I just recently saw. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be Saturday, September 14th from 6 to 9 at Eastside Brewery. Um, and it's going to be $25. But what I found interesting is those proceeds are going to go for the scholarship fund yeah. for Parks and Rec. So that's a pretty good thing. for So those kids that uh, might have some financial limitations. Mm -hmm get those families some opportunities for health. And like I said, I'm curious to see what people dress like for their prom. Is, is it going to be know, really excited. <laughs> um, So that was it. Um, I know we had our ghost tour recently. So I know we've got another one of those coming up in the not too distant future. We also have uh, paint and sip mini canvas on uh, July 28th from one to three at Eastside Brewing. And you already mentioned all the fun stuff about the park. So that's good. Yeah. Any questions about any of our events? No. All right. Um, again, I mentioned the Stonehenge development. This is the athletic facility. Um, it's not just the football team and the schools that will have it. Parks and Rec will have access to it as well. So that'll be kind of fun when that all gets planned out. Uh, so we're going to continue to have those meetings. I'll let you know all the information. But uh, the goal is to get this thing under construction sometime in uh, maybe late spring, early summer of next year. Uh, so it'll be right on that same area right next to the Central Ohio Primary Care. Uh, we do have the markets off Main, which we talked about. You've got the uh, every Parks and Rec turning 60, and Schmidt's Food Truck is going to be there, so that's going to be fun. Uh, we also have tonight a big event, is our age-friendly community kickoff right at our Senior Center. It's going to be at 6 p.m. Um, we have, obviously, anybody who's a senior citizen, this is going to be an opportunity to find out some different programs and different options that may help uh, help them with anything from maintaining their house to fun things that the Parks and Rec group do. I know they went on a field trip the other day, and this was their, their big night on the town field trip they did, so that's always a lot of fun. Uh, concerts on the lawn this Saturday, 6.30 to 8 p.m., Heat Wave, the music of Linda Ronstadt. Jennifer, do you have any other comments on that? Is there a food truck there that uh, on Saturday? Tortilla. So, Tortilla's going to be yeah. there? All right. So that'll be fun. Looking forward to that one. Um, and then we get to the big moment that I know lots of you are waiting for. It is the reserved seating raffle for the Tomato Festival. So this is for that Thursday night. So the winner of this will get a uh, six-top, six-person table. And we have all of this in here. And we've gone through. Shake it up. Shake it up. Shake it up. Yep, shake it up, shake it up. <laughs> and the winner is... Betsy Turner. Betsy Turner, congratulations. If you're watching, you just won your wonderful six-person top uh, for Thursday night. So we'll go ahead and make sure we get the email and phone call out for that. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you ha haven't had the chance to go to the Tomato Festival in the last couple of years, um, obviously we have all the incredibly healthy things that you can eat. 
uh, all those wonderful beverages all the way around, and then there's rides for the kids and things like that. Uh, but we also have the music, and uh, that Thursday night is going to be kind of like a little bit of everything. We've got a Billy Joel cover band, we've got Captain Fantastic for Elton John, and then we have kind of a local band uh, that's going to be there. Um, what's the word? Uh, reeling in, reeling the in the years. Reeling in the I knew that's what it was. Reeling in the years. Uh, that they actually got their start at Prost just down the road from here, so they're coming in. So it's going to be a big night. Um, I know the f tables are sold out for Friday night. I think we only have a couple of tables left for Thursday and Saturday. So if you do want them, and again, there's drinks and beverages and things like that there, and you get the seats up there that you don't have to worry about, you know, in the crowd and stuff like that. Um, you're not right at the stage, but it's always a fun thing. So if you're interested in that, check that out. Um, and let's see what other fun things that we've got going on. Just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, we did talk about the changes to the tomato festival. So there are going to be, um, I don't call them, not ID badges, basically wristbands that uh, for those that are 18 and older uh, that are allowed into the tomato festival, those younger than 18 are allowed in with a parent or um, a guardian, and they do have to have the wristbands on at the entire time. Um, we're not the only ones doing this. You know, the Picktown Palooza did it the other day. Uh, the Ohio State Fair made their announcement that they're going to this as well. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, don't worry, there's going to be plenty of opportunities to ask questions about it. It's not going to make long lines. Just have your ID ready at the door, which will have some signage out there and all of that other fun stuff. So uh, we're really looking forward to it. Um, there's only, what, 15 days now? I'm not counting. Yeah, Jennifer's not counting, <laughs> but we all know it's 15 days, so it's going to be a lot of fun with that one. Uh, we also have a wellness expo after the tomato festival is over, which for us, it's before tomato festival, after tomato festival. Right now, we're just only in the before tomato festival phase. After that, it's going to be a wellness expo, um, for, uh, the first one of its time at the YMCA, and it's hosted uh, between Councilman Jeanette Strickland as well as the Reynoldsburg Dental Center. Uh, so there's some all sorts of cool things there. There was a nice presentation on uh, Council's agenda. Jennifer, you want to... And again, we don't have the technological studio power, but uh, you know, there you go. So now you can see it. Uh, but it's there, so we've got that one. Um, you heard that the football team is going to be out this weekend for a cash drop. And then on August 4th, Cross Country will be out at the same usual locations from about 10 to 3. And then, as we all know, I like to get off on my little editorial spiel towards the end of it. So this past weekend, there were a lot of conversation pieces on social media about the Chamber of Commerce. You're not on social media in Reynoldsburg, are you? Really. You're really good. That's fine. <laughs> you're, you're living a comfortable life. Um, so the Chamber of Commerce, which is not affiliated with the city of Reynoldsburg, is actually having two fundraisers. Uh, the first fundraiser that uh, is out there is actually about purses. It's called Purse Bingo. Have you heard of Purse Bingo? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you go in, you pay for your... And then at some point in time, you're going to get some kind of a purse there. Yeah. Um, and they're always very nice. If you want to check it, the chamber has some great pictures on there uh, for the purses. And if the purses aren't your thing, the other thing that they're doing is they are actually having a gun raffle. And there were a lot of questions about whether or not that is or is not appropriate and things of that nature. Um, the reality is... Uh, it's a very popular event, um, and it probably will generate a lot of money for the Chamber of Commerce that will be split amongst various charities. The Chamber's not taking all of it. They're going to be taking some, and then a majority of it goes out to various nonprofits. So I think the purses, I think the Reynoldsburg Education Foundation is one of them, and I'm sure Helping Hands and Heart are involved as well. Um, but as far as the gun raffle it is, uh, and this is market-driven. Um, I know there are a lot of people saying that, no, we don't want it, or yes, we do. The reality is they're only going to do it if it's successful financially. Same thing with the purse fundraiser. And right now, the purse fundraiser is not selling as many tickets as the gun fundraiser. Um, not sure why that is. I mean, who doesn't like a good purse? Um, but, you know, that's just me. Got to make sure you have something that goes with every outfit. Uh, but if you're interested in that, please go ahead and reach out to them. If you're not interested in either of those, that's fine. Um, that is the wonderful thing about our country is that... If we don't like something, we don't have to participate. Um, so that'll be one of those things. I know my wife and I uh, will be at the fundraiser for the purse, uh, which is actually coming up, not this weekend, but next, no, it is this weekend, actually. Um, I think it's this weekend, the 28th. Uh, so it is coming up relatively soon, so we'll be able to participate in that. Um, and then the rest, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Um, so we've got that going on. Uh, we are off next week. I was going to be on vacation, uh, but a couple of kinks in the system came up there, but I'm going to be taking care of my wife. She is probably watching, shaking her head at me right now. Uh, she's going to have to have a little ankle surgery again uh, probably tomorrow. So I'm going to be taking care of her over the next couple of weeks. 
Uh, but we will be back on August 7th uh, as we do our live from uh, Huber Park uh, broadcast uh, on that Wednesday. We'll be talking about all of those cool things that are going on, kind of like, because it's a little bit different now, because that pathway, the, the trail, is a little bit different. So it's not the same exact layout all the way across. Uh, but we're going to be there, and it's going to be fun. And I really enjoy it when Jennifer takes really deep breaths when I talk about how quickly this Commando Festival is coming up. And just like if you could visually see anxiety growing in a person, this is what it is. Uh, but this is like this every year, and we'll, we'll, it's going to be a great time. Any questions coming out? Anything out there? No, does someone just ask if there's going to be a Blues and Brews event this year? And yes, there is. And yep. she wants us to add brat, so we'll be working on that, trying to get a brat vendor to come. And... All right. We can easily that. That'll be something that'll be there. Well, Amanda, thank you very much. Thank you for all that you and everybody in Parks and Recreation do. Um, I know that sometimes it's not always the easiest thing in the world because everybody wants everything and it's always perfect, and then you throw weather in and all of these things. But you do a great job. Everybody in Parks does, and I know we will see you over the next couple of weeks at all of these cool events. So thank thanks you. again for coming. Mm -hmm. um, everybody else, stay safe, stay respectful, support our Reynoldsburg athletics, not just our football team, everybody. Uh, but So come out and support the community at the band uh, concert, at the community festival, all of these things going on. And as always, please put your shopping cart away. In the meantime, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, everybody.